So I wanted to say a few words about the theme this evening, about this word and practice and perception of something we call patience in the English language. And the Buddha pointed to this quality of patience as being an essential part of the path. He even went so far as to say it's the highest spiritual austerity, which is now often translated as the highest spiritual quality. But it's interesting because he was using that word austerity in the way um, and taking a meaning that was used in ancient India to mean something like something quite severe. You know, the kind of practices that really tire and fatigue the body and mind. And turning it around and saying his understanding of that word austerity is patience. It's quite a different quality. And yet somehow we can mistake it for this sense of endurance, this sense of gritting our teeth. And as such, it gets a very bad rap. I don't know how many of you are attracted to this retreat because you love the idea of patience. Or maybe you feel you could use a lot more patience in your life. And indeed, as we do develop the quality of patience, our lives become much happier. You know, less overwhelmed, less burdened by the pressures of, and expectations that are on us or that we put upon ourselves. You know, we start to be free from this terrible burden of time when we develop a sense of patience, staying with, staying here with what's arising right now. Patience also um, alleviates many of the difficulties and obstacles on the path. You know, it has a very healing effect on our relationships. Uh, it helps our bodies to heal. Sometimes we might have a chronic health condition. And uh, you know, when we have something acute, it's fairly easy to sort of think, okay, I can take some medicine, go to the doctors, get a diagnosis and make it go away. But what if you have a chronic health condition? I have a gastric condition that's not going away. And in fact, as we age, it may only worsen. How can we stay present to that in a way that doesn't wish to be somewhere else, but to gen genuinely care and tend to what's arising with a sense of spacious patience? Patience is also a very powerful um, quality and also attitude that helps us to undermine and uproot the hindrances to peace, the hindrances to deep meditation. Often it's not that we're doing something wrong in our practice, but we're just pushing that little bit too hard. You know, we're wanting the results now, and as a result of that, we become very results-oriented and less concerned about how we're taking each step, about the causes we're putting in place. And of course, patience can help us develop this wider, wiser sorry, relationship to time, a relationship that understands that um, time is not our foe. You know, time isn't something we can fight. Yes, we have a finite amount of time. We don't know how long we'll live. But time is very malleable. You know, if we approach time with that sense of impatience, a sense of urgency, even a few moments can feel like an eternity. But when we're really in the present, when we're really making peace, then time seems to disappear. Yeah? So you have two days here. <laughs> Are you eager to hear all about patience and get it sorted out in these two days? Or are you going to try to learn to relate to patience as a practice, patience as a process, something that has to take the time it takes. Yeah. So in this world that glorifies and promotes this idea of instant gratification, patience is quite an unpopular subject, I would say, and something that in a way frustrates our desires. We're so kind of driven by desire and conditioned by the idea that desire is going to help us to get what we want, which is quite the opposite from what the Buddha said, that actually desire is already a lack. Desire is already a sense of discontent, a sense of not having enough. And yet we're so conditioned to follow our desires and to want to get the results, to want to get the objects of our desires as soon as we possibly can. The last thing we want to do is be patient. I was remembering today, you know, the word patience, where my mom would say, be patient. It often led to a lot more frustration and like, oh, 
oh, feeling like I just couldn't wait, you know. Or she'd say, dinner's only going to be half an hour. Half an hour? No! <laughs> I'm so hungry, I can't wait. You know, so it's not a very glamorous idea. And one of my friends who came to this retreat said that um, her friend asked her, you know, what are you doing with your time off these next two days? And she said, well, I'm going to this retreat on patience. And her friend said, what, patience? Haven't you got enough of that yet? How much more time do you need to be patient? <laughs> Can't you get it done? You know, if she would have said, I'm going to retreat on the gentle art of assertiveness, they'd have gone, yeah, that sounds good. You know, but patience asks for a sense of humility, actually, and a sense of restraint. So it's interesting that, you know, even in the Buddhist path, even in meditation circles, we tend to come looking for the quickest way. One of the most common questions people ask is, you know, how do I get to the goal faster? Is there some kind of shortcut I can take? And as a result of that, this whole Buddhist path, the beautiful Eightfold Path, which the Buddha makes clear in his teachings, as the one and only way, becomes littered with shortcuts that basically lead us astray. We can think that something's going to cut corners, that something's going to kind of, you know, somehow we can jump the queue. But in the end, we only get lost because we haven't got enough patience. So why is patience so difficult? And how can we actually practice it in a way that is enjoyable, in a way that does bring more happiness and more peace? And I think one of the difficulties with this word is, as I said in the beginning, our wrong understanding of what it means. You know, we've been conditioned to think it means endurance. It means a kind of, I'll tolerate the situation so long as it changes. You know, even when we bring that attitude to the practice, we say, okay, all right, I'll follow the schedule as long as it works. I'll keep the silence so long as it's enjoyable. Or I'll watch the breath so long as I get calm. We're always making a bargain with our minds, with our lives. You know, I'll do this so that later on I'll get the results. And this is not what patience means according to the Buddha. The root word of patience is something called kamati. And this word kamati is used in ordination ceremonies when the candidate approaches their teacher to take the robes. So if any of you are thinking about it, this is what you'll have to say. <laughs> the candidate says something like kamati uh, sangasa tasma tumhi. And this means something like may the May the Sangha accept me. May the Sangha approve. May the Sangha forgive. May the Sangha allow me to come into its fold. It doesn't mean may the Sangha endure me. May the Sangha tolerate me with all my faults. No, it's asking for approval. It's asking for acceptance. It's asking for something much softer, much more welcoming than tolerance. So how do you feel when you're just tolerated? You know that somebody's got something else to do, but, you know, they're kind of half listening, but they're listening in a way that, you know, is trying to hurry you up, or they're listening maybe to find a solution, to try and fix your problems. It doesn't have the same effect. It doesn't have that same sense of peace and acceptance and welcome that someone who really listens fully can bestow. Sometimes listening is one of the most beautiful gifts we can give to another. And we can learn to listen to our body and mind, total listening, with every pore, with every cell, with every part of our mind. Just bringing that beautiful softness to the moment in ways that soften this restless desire. So patience is something soft, something that embraces and accepts another and our own faults. Yeah. It is a quality of mind that is something, again, quite um, inviting, quite gentle, quite beautiful to experience. But it's also an attitude that we bring, a disposition that we have towards life. 
So it contains qualities like love, like acceptance, as I said, like contentment. Yeah. If you think of a mother or a father or any caregiver that truly loves the one they're caring for, they have immense amounts of patience. That love feeds the patience and it allows it to grow. And similarly, patience is in a way a container for all the other qualities on the path. And I think this is why the Buddha says it's the highest quality, it's the highest austerity, if you like. Because it gives the other qualities time to develop and to become complete. Most of us here, I'm sure, can be kind for a while (laughs) until somebody does something that irritates us and we run out of patience, right? But those beings who have developed so much patience and wisdom with it that understand that we all behave in ways due to our conditioning, due to, as Yael said, the inner and the outer conditions that we meet in our lives, when they really understand this, they never hurry us along the path. They never expect us to develop or to be something we're not. You know, my own teacher, Ajahn Brahm, is immensely patient, and I do attribute that to his understanding of non-self. He understands that, you know, what he's seeing is not necessarily a person in a sense of a solid entity, but someone or something in process, in progress. Sometimes not in progress. I've been to my teacher full of despair many a times. And one of the things I've noticed is he just knows how to hold space. One of the most reassuring things he's ever said and that I've ever heard when I have been, you know, going through anxiety or going through doubt or despair, he just looks at me lovingly, patiently. He even seems to relax more fully. And he says, I'm not worried about you. You'll be fine. And this is just one of the most beautiful sort of expressions of confidence, of trust that gives rise to that beautiful patience that can hold the space no matter what. And even if I'm happy, even if to me, I look like I'm thriving and doing well, he won't judge me for that either. There'll be no expectation or pressure that I show up that way next time. It's just the passing winds of life, the emotions that are going through the body and mind. You know, and again, these are conditioned. Yeah, I did want to say one funny thing. Maybe this is a good time because sometimes, you know, we can give space and time for the good qualities to grow. But how is it when we meet those difficult qualities, the frustration, the irritation, the boredom? Are you expecting to be bored in the next two days? Those of you who have been on retreat know you will be. (laughs) Those who haven't yet, just wait for the boredom to come. But when we reject boredom too quickly, we we fail to see it deeply. We fail to see that boredom too can be quite an interesting quality to observe. You know, it's never the same. It's shifting. It's changing all the time. So even boredom, we can learn to have this sense of spaciousness. Patience is gentle. Patience is spacious like the wide open sky. It holds space for the difficult emotions as well. You know, or sometimes you might be feeling angry or irritated. Sometimes you might be desiring the results of the practice, wondering if it's working. But when you look at it a bit more closely, these are often actually signs of impatience. It's not that there's anything to be particularly angry about, but there's a sense that you want things to develop faster than they can. And because of that, we get irritated. You know, take, for example, the... Uh, idea of somebody in the traffic, you know, they're stuck in a queue. Uh, there's no way the queue is going to move. There are traffic lights, there's congestion, there might be building works, whatever it is. And that person's not really angry with any particular individual. But they just feel sheer rage at the fact that their, um, that their uh, wish for things to move more quickly is frustrated. It's sheer impatience that makes them bang on the horn. (laughs) You know, maybe they're not having a tantrum like a child. Children express impatience beautifully, very readily. But inside, you know, maybe we're we're really seething because of impatience, because we've simply blown a fuse. 
And it can happen in the meditation too. You know, we want to develop meditation, say, on the breath. We've heard that we should watch the breath. And the first problem comes that, okay, maybe you can find the breath, but the mind simply wanders away. Or maybe you don't even find the breath, right? So no matter how much aspiration you came with, that very quickly gets frustrated. And these are the five aspirations that you might be well to bear in mind. So the five aspirations are inspiration. We feel inspired by the teachings, hopefully. We feel inspired to develop this patience. We feel inspired to watch the breath. And that turns into aspiration. Great. We decide to kind of pull all our qualities together, bring our energy to the practice and be very clear about the goal, aspiration. But then at some point it turns into perspiration. We start sweating, it's not happening, it's not working, help! And then into desperation, and you can guess the last one, expiration. You die without the results. (laughs) So from inspiration to aspiration, perspiration, desperation and expiration. And why is that? We took a wrong turn somewhere from aspiration to perspiration, mainly because of impatience. If we could only just stay with this moment and allow the breath to develop, the breath to just enter our mind rather than going out looking for it and trying to capture it and drag it inside, then the breath would have a chance to to stay and we would have a chance to develop beautiful ways of relating to the breath that make it easy to hold, easy to stay with. So lastly, almost, (laughs) because I'm sure many of you are tired, I wanted to talk about patience as a way of relating to life, a way of relating to the body and mind. Because as I say, sometimes we might not be feeling patient. And at this time, we need to be patient with that too, patience with the impatience, if you like. So the Buddha talks about three right intentions or motivations on the path. And this is actually the second factor of the Eightfold Noble Path, which is the heart of the Buddha's teachings. Sometimes people say, is the Buddha, are the Buddha's teachings a philosophy? Are they a religion? Are they a daily lifestyle? And I often say, no, they're none of that. But they are a path. To me, the teachings are a path, a path of practice that we can walk on, that we can develop, that we can tread. And the first of these uh, factors in the path is having a right view, and a right view in the sense that it's leading to the beautiful qualities, the beautiful motivations of mind. So we have some appreciation of the fact that there is suffering, that all of us experience suffering, either gross forms of suffering or subtle forms of irritation or stress or fatigue. It's inevitable and it happens to all of us, especially when our desires are frustrated, when we can't get what we want. So because of this, when we appreciate this, the only wise response is to have compassion, to develop kindness, to develop this sense of loving kindness that relates to others as a mother would relate to a child. You know, loving kindness is one of the right motivations. It's called avyapada, which literally means non-ill will. And it's an aspect of patience. It's an aspect of non-irritation, non-ill will. A softness of the mind. And soft qualities of the mind make us incredibly resilient. The mind becomes wide and able to contain so much. And along with that, this idea of compassion, another beautiful motivation, which is the way that love responds when it meets suffering. It's the mother's love for a child who's maybe distressed, sad, or who's hurt, you know, grazed their knee. A mother would always look upon that child with a great deal of compassion. She wouldn't say, oh, you silly little thing, you know, it's only a cut knee. She would kiss that knee better and the child would feel are uh, relaxed and at ease. And another aspect of this compassion is gentleness. And gentleness is very close to patience. You know, not being violent with our bodies and minds, not pushing them to be something they're not, but really giving them the time they need to develop and to grow. So these attitudes 
are very, very skillful and full of wisdom in helping us um, overcome the uh, resistance, the struggle that we have with more afflictive states of mind. Lastly, I do want to mention the uh, other really skillful uh, way of relating, which is nekama, and it literally means renunciation. Like patience, the word renunciation sometimes has a um, a sort of unpopular kind of flavour, you know, renouncing sounds maybe a little bit cold or dry. But true renunciation means letting things be, letting things just unfold. And sometimes with patience, that means simply waiting, stopping, even walking away. I had to do that this afternoon. For some reason, maybe the tiredness, maybe the sudden change with the retreat, I was getting myself in a bit of a knot, you know, what will I talk about this evening and how can I fit it into the time and will I be able to cover every aspect of patience that I want to? And my tendency, just like most of us, was to keep on thinking, keep on trying, keep on working it out. And at some point I realised this is not patience. I need to give myself space, so I just stopped. I did a guided meditation, just lay down on my back and allow myself to relax. And just took a break, you know, had some water, had a shower, and came back to it later. And new ideas arose. And the same in our relationships, you know, if you are in a conflict in any way, sometimes the best thing to do, if you can't listen or if the other person's not listening to you, is just simply ask for some time, ask for some space. And it's amazing how things work themselves out. Maybe they'll come up with a solution. You won't have to do that yourself. So these are wise ways of relating that nurture the causes for our spiritual growth and are rewarding in and of themselves. And this is the beauty of learning how to relate wisely to life, to relate wisely to our body and minds. Again, we're not doing it to get something else later on. If we really relate wisely with unconditional love, with unconditional patience, forgiveness, acceptance, then the result is in the attitude itself. The very act of patience, when it's soft, when it's gentle, when it's spacious, is already the result. It's already a beautiful place to be. And because of this, the moment has a chance, the Dhamma has a chance to reveal itself to us. You know, we start to turn our minds, or the minds turn by themselves inside. And they start to see the nature of existence. They start to see that everything that arises passes away. Simply because we're able to wait quietly, softly, gently in this moment without looking for the truth somewhere else. So ironically, (laughs) even though we're not looking for a shortcut, we're not looking for a quick path, Patience becomes the fastest way because patience takes us inward, not onward, to something else. And patience is beautiful. Patience is attractive. And there's no end to that patience once it takes root. So my invitation to all of you is to encourage and explore this quality of patience, including how impatience shows up for you. Maybe it shows up as restlessness, as worry, as control. And this is okay. But then remembering to take that step back and ask yourself, how can I meet this in a way that perhaps I haven't done before? How can I meet it with more kindness, more softness, a sense of spaciousness, in a way that softens the mind? Yeah? When we bring more softness and forgiveness, Patience has a chance to grow. And also noticing how we get burdened by the sense of time. Just noticing when expectations, when pressures, when demands start to creep into your practice, start to creep into your mind. And without judging it, again, just notice, just stand back and see, is this really taking me towards peace or am I unnecessarily picking up that burden of time? So I'm going to talk much more about this, and both of us will talk much more about this as the retreat unfolds, but this is just to give you a little overview in the beginning, 
Um, and just to highlight the point about patience being something soft, something accepting, something that allows us to be and to stay with whatever's arising right now. And it's something that can be developed. This is why it's an art. This is why it's a process. And it allows the process of practice to unfold in a very natural way, without that force that makes our minds hard and brittle and dry. So I offer this for your reflection. And uh, I would just like to invite you to do a little bit of meditation with us. For those of you who are new to the meditation, you might be looking around and thinking you have to sit a certain way, <laughs> but uh, just see what your body needs right now. It might be that it needs a little stretch, you might need to change your posture, particularly the height of your cushion or the position of your knees. Take the time, if you need to, to get another cushion, if there are any left. Or another shawl. Yeah, there's chairs along the side. just noticing how those words have resonated for you. Just offering yourself this gift of time. Time with spiritual companions in this beautiful, peaceful space. And see if you can just tune in some of those qualities of spaciousness, gentleness, kindness. Perhaps externally, perhaps internally. To help you meet this moment just as it is. Just receiving any physical sensations you notice right now. And giving them space. Being kind to the feeling and the emotions in your body and mind. Nowhere to get to, nothing to do. 
or just wait kindly, patiently, gently in this moment with whatever's arising right now.
is uh, what it might be nice for everyone, including ourselves, to have an early night. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that will really support you if you can let us put your phones to sleep. <laughs> Give your phones a break, they also need a rest. <laughs> Enjoy this evening.